name is Dan. I am a senior in Lubin School of Business, and I major in accounting. I always wanted to start my own business, so I decided to take this course and see what's really going out there. So the benefit of ginseng tea drink, it has many benefits. First, it improves mental, mental function, it reduces stress, and increase strength and energy in overall body. And I like the best about ginseng tea is that it refines your skin tones. And also, ginseng does not contain any caffeine. Okay, and um, I've been drinking this drink since freshman of college, and I think it helps me a lot because it just keeps you focused. And um, so my business concept is to bring this drink to the market for people intake heavy in coffee and energy drinks, like Ripple, Monster, you know, heavy, yeah, heavy caffeine. So it's for college students, people who work over time, and people with bu uh, busy lifestyle, and of course anyone who likes something new um, and healthy. It's always a good choice. So the implementation concept. First, I did three, I test three things. The first is the taste, second is the packaging, and the price. Of course, the last one is selling. So the first one, I did the, ta uh, the taste. And I pick a random people to taste my sample. First, I did the plain ginseng tea without any added flavors. So people, their comment was it, it was a little too strong. So I decided to add two, two more flavors, which is the red date and the goji berry to the ginseng. But they are separate, two separate flavors. Oh, uh, red date and goji, they, they are very good uh, to your health also, especially goji, improve your eyesight. And second time, when I validated, people prefer the goji berry because I also add a little natural honey to it. So it has a great scent, uh, great taste, a little sweetness to the flavor. And the next one is the packaging. I tried to test, I also asked people about how they like it first. Is it to brew? Uh, do they want to brew themselves at home? Or second, if they want to buy it in a bottle that it's already made? Or third, it's buy it in a storefront where it's fresh and it's a hot drink. And for many young uh, young people, they like the bottling because they say it's it's convenient. And seniors, they would prefer to buy it in the storefront where it's nice and ready to serve. So there's one thing, one problem about the packaging is that for the bottling, um, the consistency and the strength will lost once it's stayed there for a couple of days. So I didn't really go with that implementation. So what I did was I uh, do the storefront. I implement to test to sell it in the storefront, which is in a Chinese restaurant. Uh, my so this is the restaurant. I spoke to one of the owner and have him, if he's willing, let me to post my sign up there on the wall. And he did. Next one. So the validation from the Chinese restaurant. At first, the owner was telling me for the first few weeks, no one was really, well, they looked at it, but they didn't really have any questions. So after a couple, after a few weeks, that people started to look at it and have questions. So their question was, what is it? How is it made? Is it good? So there's our, um, is it real ginseng? And then the last one will say, oh, I will try it next time. <laughs> so I guess it's kind of new. But overall, five cups were sold uh, within a month and a half. So I think it's still a pretty good uh, result. <laughs> my validation, I tried to test my validation with the price. So at the very beginning, I started uh, this is a 12 ounce cup. So my valid 
foundation is selling this cup for five dollars. So first time I went out asked some random people, their comment was too expensive. Um, I don't know. No, maybe. So I spoke to Professor B, and he said that you probably want to lower your lower the price and maybe have a different size. So what I did was I lower, well actually I change it to two sizes. One is eight ounce to sell for 250 and a little bit bigger for 350. Second time, oh wait. Second time, many said maybe. So I guess the price really, it really, pe people really looked at the price and the drink because they never had it before and it's a little cheaper than five dollars. And one thing about uh, why, oh, the reason why I want to sell it for five dollars and test it to sell for five dollars instead of a dollar or two dollars is because ginseng is expensive and, and I don't want people to think that it is so cheap because overall it's not cheap, ginseng, especially American ginseng. It's, expensive so to get a nice cup where you can buy health buy healthy drink it I think it should be uh, more cost more so so the real market validation is the real market says it's a new drink so will it succeed uh, to sell for five cups I don't know if you will survive in the real market but if I will revise my implementation plan, I will really to uh, consult with a consultant about the bottling process and see how it uh, to make a real bottle and test to sell it in a local supermarket, farm stand, even display in a flea market, Just maybe the Stormville flea market. They have access people over thousands in a weekend. Um, Instead of sell it in a Chinese restaurant, I think the sample is too small. So, yeah, this is my thank you for listening. Oh, and while you, you know, may feel five was the middle of that, getting out and doing it for real, you know, is, is important. I mean, some yeah. say it's better to try to get someone to open up. You know, the, the value of getting someone to open up their wallet and take out ten dollars is maybe on par with some MBA. So, you know, getting out there in the real market and testing it is, is, is valuable and it's, it's great. Um, so, good job, thanks. Uh, just one, one question for you. Uh, there are commercial makers of Vincent tea, are there not now? In other words, it's not an, an, an original product, is it? Well, Vincent tea, I know there is a very uh, famous Jensen grower in Wisconsin, and they're the only one in the US. Um, only one? US, right, only one. It's the Shoes Jensen. And maker, I don't think they make it. Basically, she's ginseng. They, uh, they grow. They produce their own ginseng, and then they sell it to people, uh, mostly Asian markets. Oh. Yeah, in in the in U.S. Mm -hmm. in U.S. and, and mm -hmm. around the world. No, and, and to, to charge a premium price, I, I thought Asher was going to mention that that coffee cup was a big blank canvas. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, that's, what, what are they paying for? And if people ask, is it real ginger, there's got to be something like a logo that says real ginger. I'm sorry. So, um, he stands corrected. Yeah. So real, see, I need some ginseng because my memory's not so good. But, um, I, I would think if that's what people are asking and talking about the price, and you have that white canvas, you know, something around making it look very authentic, real, or if there really is only one American yeah, ginseng, uh, putting that in. But, um, but good, good lessons. Well, one of the things I, I thought, in having been in the food and beverage business for many years, is that you had a product that they didn't know, they didn't understand. What is it? So it might have been a better validation because you had different steps. You were trying to take, get validate the taste. You were trying to validate the acceptance to the market and then the price. So instead of offering it for sale to your test market, possibly you should have given it away just to see whether they liked it or not. 
and then you could have modified your formula, and then once they have a, a basic acceptance of it, you can place a value to it. I'm sure that you know Ashton has probably you know done some designs, and someone he thought it was fabulous, and they thought it was horrible. So therefore, he couldn't sell it. Never. Never. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, meeting you now, I'm sure, is always great. But but you have to complete the step of, of each validation before you go to the next one. They they couldn't say whether it was worth five dollars because they didn't know what it was. Okay. Yeah, that part about educating the market—that's a big cost. We have to educate the market. All and right. And the, the comparison I'll make just quickly for you that is, I grew up when I was going to Pace. We used to have a, a, a little where the Starbucks is now. And it was called the, the chew and chew. And, we used to call it the chew and choke, but it was it was a terrible it was a terrible coffee shop, and everything there was a dollar. It was a buck a buck a buck a buck a buck. And when someone said to me, you know, there's a company out of out of Seattle coming, and they're selling coffee for three dollars a cup. I said, never happened. Okay. Never happened. You see what happened. Yeah. That's the point. Once they understand it, they'll pay for it. Especially the health benefits. People will pay up for, of course, they truly believe yeah. in this well. market. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah, absolutely they, right. Often, a higher price will get more, more, more and better customers in, in the delivery market. I right. know that can signal that it's, it's real. These things, too. Good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Our penultimate. Um, we have two left.